Okay guys, I'm back. And we've got some news about the XL12. <clears throat> it's kind of like every other saw. I told you I was going to put a bar and chain on and go cut some wood. Didn't work out. I'll tell you what happened. I got the, uh, the bar and the chain and everything on it. And I did and go out and cut wood. To see if you know how it was going to cut. I like to test them out a little bit before I get on uh, YouTube with them, you know. So I went out and I cut wood all afternoon. I burned up a tank of gas, put another tank of gas in it, and then all of a sudden, didn't didn't want to start. Right after it, had, I burned up a tank, <clears throat> put the new gas in. <clears throat> Sorry guys, I'm kind of allergies. It's all the cemetery work. We've been blowing leaves and everything. Uh, dust but anyway so I burned up one tank of gas so I went ahead and I filled it back up and uh, went to start it and it wouldn't start so I thought geez that's awful weird right it's just running so played around with it there for a few minutes got it to start but it would only run if I throttled it up pretty sure it's a carburetor now it won't start at all but just the same, I'm going to go ahead and go in and try to gap the points. I don't know for this saw. I'll see if I can find some specs online for the, the gap. If I can't find anything, we'll roll with probably 15 thousandths. That's what the Lee at the chainsaw shop had told me on my McCulloch. There's a launching point, and that was about 18. So 15 should work. I just want to make sure they're somewhere close. And not like completely way off and that's why I don't know I mean because I tried to gap them the first time but no whole lot about gap in there at that point so I may have gapped them with the points actually in the closed position I don't know who knows I mean that's obviously not why it quit the first day I mean, maybe they were off a little bit, but it should, I mean, if it ran that long. I think spark, Spark's being robbed from somewhere. I hope the condenser isn't bad. I really don't want to change another condenser. It's going to be miserable to get the flywheel off this thing. I've had it off, like I say, once, but it was a miserable job. I had to get the pullers out, beat and thrash, and beat and thrash, and I didn't think it was going to come off. I was afraid I was going to break it. But I finally got it off, so... I don't know. We'll see what happens. I try to get it off. It, I'm getting a little bit frustrated, honestly, with these saws. The friggin' pooling. Got that running, and then the next day it quit. That thing. Ugh. Poolings are striking an aggression cord with me now. So is that 245. You guys probably haven't seen that yet. I don't know what order I'm putting these videos up in when I'm filming them, you know. I'm just trying to get the most filmed I can, and when it looks like I've got enough for a video, it goes up. So, some of these saws, I don't know if you've seen yet or not, but... Anyway. So, that's where we're at, guys. I don't know. I'm getting a little disgusted. And these saws, these old saws and stuff, they're, they're money pits trying to get them running. Especially if you have a spark problem. If you have a spark problem, you can burn up like 25, 30 bucks easy. Plug and freaking coil and condenser and you know, depending on what you need. And when you get them running right, you know, bars and chains and stuff are old on them. You can only run that stuff a little while. You know, usually like some of the grandpa saws, the teeth are almost filed off, you know, so, I'm looking at bars and chains for all these, and, geez, bar and chain, bars are like 20, 30 bucks, depending on, you know, that's just for a small bar, if you get like a big bar, some of these saws I might want, like the McCulloch, if I get that run, I'll probably go like a 24 inch bar or something on that, it's going to be a pretty big bar, it cost me a lot of money, and then you got the chains, those are like 30, 25, 30 bucks, right? So you 50 bucks per saw, you figure, times 8, 400 bucks, right? So, I don't know. 
I just, I don't know. Got the XL12 running. Still have to shoot the, the cotton video with that. Uh, that's it. <laughs> that's literally the only saw that's just ready to go. Knock on wood. I mean, I haven't tried to start it in like a week, so who knows. But, I mean, all the saws are close, or they feel close because they'll run, most of them, except like two or three. And, but it's like, it's more of a tease than anything because they run, but you can't get them to run good enough to do anything with. And I mean, I feel this urgency to get all these running. I don't know why. I mean, this could be a life project, right? It's not pressing. It's not like, I'm definitely thinking right now about trying to find a saw. It's like my bread and water saw. I thought it was going to be the solo, but I don't know. That thing's finicky. And, I mean, these old saws, they run great, but, you know, I don't want to run the crap right out of them either and end up burning up something, or, you know what I mean? They're old saws. I want to run them, but I don't want to run them, you know, to, to, to death. <laughs> so, I don't know. And I'd like to have my main saw have a chain break, right? Because uh, your main saw, you could be in some pretty interesting positions with. So I'm looking for something beefy with a chain break. I don't know what I want. I don't think I want to steal. I don't have anything against them. And neither does anybody I know. Other than they always say that a steel will rattle themselves apart. That's what I've heard. This is just what I've heard. You steel guys are going to be on there and be like, you don't know nothing. My steel's the bomb. <laughs> I'm not saying it is or it isn't. I'm just saying that's what I've heard. Around here, everybody kind of leans toward Husqvarna. But, I don't know. Honestly. I'm always one that's like, kind of off on my own trail. Like, Usually what everybody else goes with, I go with something different. And I kind of feel that way about the Husqvarna. I don't have anything against the Husqvarna. Zip. Zero. I just haven't had good experiences with them running and running well. Anyone I've seen doesn't doesn't run that well. But I mean, when they run, they run tip top. They're definitely a powerful saw. And they don't do much for me. Like, you look at a Husqvarna and it's just like, yeah. <laughs> you know, I like something that sparks a, a passion, you know. Maybe I can find an older saw. This Dolmar, this Saxon Dolmar here, is supposed to have a chain break. Now, if I could get a chain break for that, then that could be my main saw. I don't know if I told you this the other day or not. I can't, I, like I say, I can't keep track of what I've said, what I haven't said, what I've uploaded, what I haven't uploaded, what I said in what video. But I found a chain break. Well, because I have just the case, but there's nothing for the chain break in the case. Zip, zero, gone. The handle's gone. The band's gone. It's all gone. So I found a case online with everything in it, but it needs a new band for 60 bucks. So that's ridiculous. Like, that is insane. But it's also the only one online. <laughs> I don't even know if I could get a band for that case either. And I don't know why they're saying it needs a band. You know what I mean? You can't just go by what people say. You know, just because they're like, well, it's great shape, needs a band. Does it? Or does it need a spring? Or does it need it? you know? You don't know with people. So, I don't know. I don't know where I stand with all this saw stuff. That McCulloch, I wanted that to run so bad. And I mean, technically it does, but I just can't get it to run right. It ain't for lack of trying. Gigi and I have this goal that we're going to be like super two-cycle mechanics with, you know, time. <laughs> so... That's kind of our goal. We're trying to learn as much as we can about them. Because it's like, 
You can take a gas engine. And they can be finicky. Put a two-cycle engine. Never seen nothing like it in my whole life. <laughs> it is the worst, guys. The absolute worst. Okay. When they run, there's nothing like them in the whole world. When they don't run, there's nothing like them in the whole world. <laughs> So, yeah, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can find the specifications for gapping these points. I really don't want to get in there and do that. That is a miserable job, because you can never get the flywheel off, and I hate it. But i got to do it, just for peace of mind, if nothing else. I'm pretty sure I probably need a carb kit, but I'm just not sure why it ran so good and then it didn't. And... I think I took the carburetor off after it quit, cleaned it and checked it all out, but I might do that again because I can't honestly remember what I found. When you get all these saws torn apart at once and you're working on all the saws, you can't remember exactly what was the deal with each saw. That's a good reason to film, actually, film the videos. Because then at least I can go back and see what I did. But that was before I was filming everything, when I was in the carburetor on that. So... I don't honestly know what I found or what the deal was or anything like that. I've literally been talking for 12 minutes now. That's funny. All right. Well, I'm, I'm having a little rant here. I don't know. I don't know. All right, guys. I'm going to go see if I can figure out how, what, you know, how many thousands to gap them points to and then. We'll be back. All right, guys. Stay strong. I'll be back. Okay, guys. So I'm back. Looks like it's definitely 15 thousandths. So we'll see. Yeah, that screw is definitely, definitely stripped out up here. I thought it was. So, yeah, anyway, 15 thousandths on that setting for the... For the uh, points, so that's pretty good, fifteen thousands, because that's what I that's what I said I was gonna set them to if I couldn't find anything. So Lee was actually, because you said you'd never really worked on McCulloch's that much, so you know comparing it to a saw of similar age, he was pretty darn close on that figure. I mean, if it had been one of these, he would have been right on the money. All right. frustrating. Certain days, you know, some days it's, whoops, some days it's just, you know, a fun project, and then after a while it's like, you get frustrated, because you just want the stuff to run, and it just fights you, and you just put time, and money, and money, and time, all into it, and then it doesn't run for you. It's sad. I'm just trying to raise awareness, because people's hearts are breaking now. <laughs> That's funny. No, but it, it really does get get kind of frustrating after a while. Alright, so, but anyway. That's enough of my sad story. <laughs> so, what do you think, guys? How many of you think... How many of you think we can get all these saws wrong? Hmm? I mean, really... and I don't have high hopes for that. I don't even know if I want to mess with it. If it wasn't for the fact it was Grandpa's, whoops, I'd probably get it running and unload it, honestly. But, I don't know. I've thought about unloading that Home Light 245, but I don't I'd have to charge so much for it because, you know, if I could even get it running, and then if I can get it running, do I really want to get rid of it? That's the problem with this stuff. And then you get running, and you're like, oh, now it runs. Oh, yeah, I don't want to get rid of it. It's going to run now. And then, like, a week later, it dies, right? <laughs> oh, my word. It's ridiculous. So, and with the Home Light 245, it's like I got all that money tied up in that bar and chain. So I'd have to charge a bunch of them, you know, for it for that reason. Probably more than I'd ever get out of the saw. I mean, I do have the old bar and the old chain. 
and it might come to putting that back on, honestly. Because if that barn chain fits, like, the XL12 or something, it's going on it. I ain't going to part with it. So, I don't know. That screw's being stubborn now because we lost that. There it goes. All right, get that cover off now. Okay, guys, back out a little bit here. All right, I'm gonna unplug the wire here. I do want to have a good look at that wire too while I've got this all off. That ring line was sticking on this, and it's got plenty of WD-40 in there. But I'm gonna give it another shot while I get it open. Because it doesn't, it's not like sticking like it won't go in, but you got to kind of like, you know how you'll pull out sometimes and then it won't, it won't go in. You got to go chick, 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 and then it'll suck it in. Well, that's kind of the problem I've been having with it. So I'm going to go ahead and spray that out again. It gets kind of messy, but if I get that loosened up, I'd be unhappy camp. Come right in here by the slot, guys. That works good. It gives you a good opening to get down in there to that spring. Don't be afraid to really feed it to it. This is how I've been getting these loosened up. And you just pull them over a bunch. Alright. I'll probably do that more before I put it on, but that just gives you guys a quick idea. Super tech. <laughs> That's all I ever used for lubricant. It's kind of funny. I don't pay the extra for the WD-40. Because, you know, I just don't. <laughs> Alright, so the coil and everything looks pretty clean. That's good. Right? And let me move the cover back out of the way more. I'd like to get one of those boards in here and board that up. So you could get a little bit of an angle on it. You guys might be able to see it a little better. This one doesn't balance as good that way, though. Come on. Balance. Okay, maybe I'll just have to think outside the box a little bit. Get it up like that, and then your view can be completely blocked by the handlebar. Okay. So what do we got going on here? Connection there for the coil. How's this wire look? Oh, it's got like a braided coating. That's interesting. You know... What's the chances that the switch itself is bad? You know? Why not? Why couldn't it be bad? Probably not, but you, you know, you never know. Hmm. Interesting thought. Okay. Gap to the flywheel looks pretty good. That's pretty freaking close. Right there, I can check it. Where's my fuel gauge? Just slip something in there and see how it feels. 26, 19, 16, 15, 13, 11, right there. Yeah, it's pretty good, I'd say. All right. Oh yeah, this one has that freaking guard thing on there. Gotta take that off. I mean, you don't have to, but it makes it a lot easier. Maybe I'll try not to today because I don't really want to mess with it. Uh, all right. Well, I need to find a socket that fits that. Where's my socket? Right there. Okay. It's kind of set over. Well, then that panel bar is in the way again. I don't know. I don't know, guys. I'm just making all this up as I go. It doesn't really feel quite right to me. Whoops. I need to lose that one because it's heavy. Alright. Seven sixteenths. Get them dogs out of the way. Nope. Half. Yes. Oh, I remember why I took that off before. 
I took it off because um, I couldn't get my screwdriver down in there to hold it. You know, to hold the flywheel from turning while I took it off. That's why I took it off before. All right. That makes sense. Let me see if I can avoid all that today, though. I don't want to take that off. I don't have to. There it goes. All right. Nice. That is a pain, though. I don't know what that even does, to be completely honest with you guys. Not really sure what purpose it serves. Most of the saws don't have them. Did I get it off? Yep. Alright, nice. There's two washer and a locker in there. I don't want to lose. But I don't think I'm going to be able to get this off without massive catastrophic thrashing anyway. Let's see if I'm going to lock out or not. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to take that shield guard off. I can't even get in there to get a square hit on anything. That's too small. A little vicious socket. So what have I got here? You guys said you wanted it. Well, my biggest fan said you wanted to see it all. So now you're being bored to death. <laughs> The whole inner workings of everything. There it goes. Oh no, that's really sloppy. That's it. Got here. Oh, three eighths right there. That feels pretty good. Okay, catastrophic failure. We're good. <laughs> Nobody got hurt. Okay. Wow. I don't even know what happened on that one. I guess I pulled the. Adjustment lever there on the tripod. Like I said, working around this tripod can get a little sketchy. <laughs> Alright, sorry about that, guys. <laughs> Just gonna go ahead and loosen these up. must be wicked dirty or something. So it should spin right off there, but I don't want to. There it goes. Get out of there. Okay. I'm going to take this one off. Oh, there it goes. Nice. Is this one going to be looser? We're going to have some serious, lengthy premieres now, guys. You wanted them, and you're going to have them. Wow. That's ridiculous. Boy, that hangs on there. Must be coming off now. Uh, she's going to come off. She's coming dry, but she's coming. Gentlemen, open the dogs up. Oops. Slip these, this washer and this lock ring. If you guys have never seen a lock ring, aka biggest fan, if you've never seen a lock ring, well, then I might not have either. Hello, zoom in. <laughs> Come on now. Kind of focused. See what it is? It's a washer, but it's kind of cut in the middle, bent a little bit. And this bites on the nut when you screw the nut on. That lip bites on there and that locks down. And then that key.
keeps it, the nut from backing off. A really good thing to have on a flywheel. Keep everything tight and everything. Alright, cool. So those are off. Now comes the brutal battle. I don't think you guys have ever seen the brutal battle before. I'm going to turn this back to where I have a flat side here with the magnets. I can zoom this out now. I don't know why I have it zoomed in still. Well, I'll leave it zoomed in. Actually, because we're going to be in the points here in a minute, hopefully. I don't want to get that friggin' puller out again. Come on. Come off from there. No, sir. All right. Well, we're going to have to get the puller out, guys. Didn't want to do this. Well, you get to see how to use one. Oh, I really, really, really didn't want to have to get the puller out. Why? Oh, lost it again. Okay. This is bad. This is going to be one of those days. I can feel it. Try to get this tripod in as tight to the bench as I can. I don't know how people do this. Work around. It doesn't help that I have a spinny computer chair here, so it kind of doesn't really allow me to move around things very well. Okay, so on a jaw puller, I gotta back everything out here so that I can show you what this looks like. Okay, this is a three jaw puller. You have different you can spin these, take these nuts off and spin it like if you wanted this end down here. I had to spin it this way for this flywheel to be able to fit down in there. Okay, you have this tapered end here, which goes in the middle of the bolt. I showed you this on the, uh, what was it, the McCulloch? Oops, no, I don't want to adjust my daylight. Jeez. That's too much. I can't get it set right. Okay. There we go. You see that in there? How that's... I won't focus. There it is. Now uh, how that's tapered. So that is going to sit right in there. Like that. Okay. So what we're going to do is... Figure out how to get this thing zoomed back out. Come on. Alright. So... That handles right in the way. Put a one grabber up here. And if you don't get these all lined up right, it pulls crossways and then one comes loose and it's just oh I hate this. I'm getting frustrated today, guys. I'm sorry. I'm just I I just am completely frustrated. You used to have days like that. I'm sure you guys do too. Alright, so see how I'm trying to get it to bite? I'll lift this up without losing everything. Right in here between the case and the flywheel. Sliding that right down in there. I get that to bite. And all the while trying to keep this bolt centered in the hole of that crankshaft there. Okay. I can't keep everything lined up. That's the other thing. You gotta try to keep everything lined up so you don't get that out of the hole. It never wants to freaking stay lined up. This is about one of the miserablest jobs. On one of these things. Just to get the freaking flywheel off. Especially on a saw this old. Because they don't, they just come dry. They don't want to come off. And it don't seem to matter really how many times you take them off. They still don't want to come off when the time comes. Alright. never did check to see what size this thing is so I can see and then there's always one that doesn't want to grab and that would be this one over here it's 
See, Kodrick gets in bad moods, too. <laughs> it's not just you guys. Please, please, whoops, please bite, here, sorry about that guys, please bite, I wish that handlebar wasn't right in the way, and it is, it always is, okay, am I still in the, I'm still in the hole, alright, I gotta figure out what size this thing is, it's bigger than half, if I let go of this, I'll lose it probably, yeah, unbelievable, okay, Let's try. I think nine sixteenths is what it was before. Seems like yes, nine sixteenths. All right, my other ratchets out in the pickup. Usually I have two ratchets with two different sockets on them, so I can just kind of keep rolling. I get the other one out in the, out in the pickup outside. So I'm just gonna roll with what we got in here. Come on, I can't get that to bite again. Not that it was going to before. I don't know if it was or wasn't. I'm telling. Probably not. I'm just going to start winding this up. And once I get a little tension on it, I'll try to seat this one here. Oh, this is miserable. I'm telling you, I hate this. I just hate taking flywheels off. Never want to come off. There again, that jaw over here slipping every time, every stinking time. That's what it does. All right, you know what? We're gonna try something a little different. I'm gonna rotate this. I think this might have been what I did last time. To that part up here. And this over here. I can get everything lined up. Come on, don't be that way, please. Does it feel like something isn't biting or something? What am I? I'm set around on the ratchet here. No, it ain't gonna bite up there, is it? Oh, well, I don't know. You are unbelievable. You just. Oh. Mm. I'm telling you. I am telling you what. It's bunny stomping time. I've had it. I have had it with this thing. Oh, that makes me mad. Jeez. Nothing freaking Mars. Come on. Come on, you. Why? Why, 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 why? When these work, nothing works better, and when they don't, it's almost nothing worse. I'm ready to grab the rubber mallet and just beat the thing off. If it was in the aluminum, I would. Well, you know what? I might give it a couple more tonks and see if I can get it loosened up. Because I don't want to. play around with that puller today. I really don't. Sometimes you can... No, sir. Guys, I'm going to cut the camera here, and I'm going to play around with this and see if I can get it off. I'll be back. Okay, guys. 
literally right after I turned off the camera, I think I got it. So I'm going to go ahead and start winding this up a little bit. Oh my word. Jaw is coming loose on me. This is just, oh, this is unbelievable. This is just unbelievable. You can't. Hey, it's pulling it. It's pulling it. Yes! Yes! It took it off. It did it. Usually, if it doesn't come off like that, when you got this on there and everything and everything's bit up, you can hit it right on the end of that. And that'll drive it off. But we got her off, guys. Where's the key? Okay, the key is still in the shaft. So we're good. Alright. Thank God. I was about ready to lose my mind or have a head fit or something. Okay. Alright, guys. So we're back. And this is how we get to the points on this one. Just swing this up. Take this cover off. It's got a little paper gasket thing, just like the other one had. Alright. Now, if I can get something underneath there, I guess I'll put that hammer under there. There we go. Beautiful. Okay, so now we gotta get you guys zoomed in here. You gotta open them points up. Remember how to do that? Gotta turn the. I say that. Holy chicken. I don't know if I can do that. Have to get some pliers. Things stiff. Uh oh. I think it's seized or something, is it? Holy chicken. I hope not. Oh no. No, because we were just turning that before. Yeah, we're good. You can you can do this sometimes, guys. If you can't get that started around or something, you can stick that. Whoops. Oh, jeez. Don't forget magnet stuck on it. I'm telling you. You can't make this stuff up. All right. Maybe I can get a bite on that key. It's turning. Them points don't seem to be opening. No. <sighs> oh, 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 they're opening now. This is going to be hard to find the open most point when we have to turn them with friggin pliers this is ridiculous guys I'll be the first to say this is completely completely ridiculous oh 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 that's open quite a bit much more will they open though now, ain't they? Yep, they're closing now. So come back around this way. Oh, they're closing that way, okay. Come back around this way then. I've never had this much trouble before, guys. Okay, now it's closing. I would say that's about the open most point. Most open point, or openest point, or whatever okay so you know the drill now guys take the screwdriver come in here 
loosen that screw up. Right? From this side of the handle. Don't feel bad, guys. The handle's right in my way, too. Wow, that's tight. Okay. I better get something a little beefier, I guess. over. This is going to be brutal, guys. Yeah, that's got to be tighter. I knew it. I knew it was going to loosen up on me. have one of them days where you just can't feel like you can handle it. Today's one of those days for me. Alright, so that's all gapped. Looking pretty good. Okay. Everything else is looking pretty good. That condenser, I don't know. I don't know. Go ahead and... Oh, you guys are lost. Dazed and confused. Wipe some of this crud off this coil here. While I'm in here, might as well, right? So that cleared away. Make sure all them surfaces are. over. Just give it a little twist, make sure it's on there. I like this setup and I don't all at the same time. It doesn't feel real secure, but it's a lot easier than the screw that's stuck and you got to try to get it out. And, you know, stuff like that. So, anyway, yeah, while we're in here, we might as well clean this up just a little bit. Huh? Nothing too fancy. I don't want to look too good. Sage. Alright. 
Okay. There we have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is all. Wow, there's a lot of sawdust in there. That is all gapped and everything. Got like sticks. Oh my word. This is kind of funny, actually. It must be the oiler. Hmm. Yep, I think that's the oil tea. Wow. Okay. I'm getting ADD, guys. Sorry. <laughs> Alright, so let's go ahead and put the flywheel back on. I can't get that rotated, so we're just going to put it on with that oriented that way. That works. Can I get the hiccups? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There it goes. Is that on there? That's on there, I think. As far as I know. Pretty good to me. Okay. So, go ahead and lay this on first. And lay this on next. Washer, lock washer. And not that nut isn't very heavy duty, really, for its application. These flywheel nuts on these old saws are weird. I always feel like they're cross-threaded or something, but they're not. I, I don't know. Okay, let's try to put a socket on that and see what, we, what we're dealing with here. I don't like the way that's setting, but let's see if it feels... No, that feels good. I guess it was just sticking at the beginning. Yeah, I can turn it. Okay. Alright, we're good. Go ahead and tighten this thing down. Oops. I like my Pittsburgh ratchet better for this, but like I say, it's outside. In the pickup. and everything. I'm going to go ahead and just take this and just make sure that everything feels tuggy. Oh yeah, everything's good. Okay, so go ahead and put this thing back on. So I'm pretty sure we're knock on wood unless our condenser's fried. We shouldn't have to be back in the air for a while. I'm hoping anyway. I don't want to really fight that fly flywheel any longer. Or any more times than I have to. Okay, that is the socket for that. Alright, so that is all back together now, guys. And this wire is a little bit bare right there. I don't know if I can get you guys close enough in to see that or not. Probably 
not have it focus, but... No, you can. You can see it. See that right there? I don't know. I don't know if that's affecting us or not. Not really sure, honestly. I think that unplugs. Oh, it does. Nice. Awesome. Okay, so that unplugs, guys. So what I'm thinking is... Posing a problem, but you never know. You just, you can't really ever tell, can you? So, I want to back this out. And then, get some electric tape. I had some come, uh, I cleaned up. I don't know what I did with it. This is my problem, guys. I'm rolling with something, right? I'm trying to keep track of stuff, whatever. And then, oh, here it is. And then I, whoops, and then I clean up. And when I clean up, I'm like, okay, now, I need to be more efficient. So I'll put this somewhere where I know where it is. Da -da 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 -da. And then what happens? I forget where that place is. Da -da 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 -da. And then it just, it doesn't work. You know, I never could figure out how people cut electrical tape. Because you can't, like, rip it, right? It just stretches. I'm going to use this. Utility knife here. Same. Cut up with that, I guess. Here we go. There it goes. Alright. I'm just going to go ahead and wrap that right where that comes around. i got to get some of that shrink tubing, but as of right now, I don't have any, so I get by with a little electrical tape. I'm going to go ahead and wrap the whole thing, actually. Might as well. It's got a coating on it, but just to give myself a little peace of mind. I'm kind of sick of getting lifted, guys, honestly. You can only get lifted so many times by a saw before it becomes not fun anymore. <laughs> like the first time. <laughs> then by the third time, you're like, what the heck? That's kind of where I'm at. I'm definitely at the what the heck stage. So, all right. That is all wrapped. Beautiful. Well, not beautiful, but it's, it's wrapped. <laughs> Alright, so, it's funny, what was I thinking? We have a rule about you can't say beautiful on a job site, right? This is kind of like a job site. Alright, so that end went up there, so I'm going to go ahead and stick that back on there. The whole thing wrapped now. Right up to lead on that end. So if that was causing us any trouble, which I don't know. I mean, it's, it was close enough to here. I, it's hard to say. But we'll find out for sure here. It's a possibility. I rule out no possibilities now. Okay, I'd rather be over safe than not safe enough here. Where is... Oh, there. Alright, and the lead seems good to this. I... I may do some research on how to test one of these switches, because I'm not totally convinced that it isn't the switch, really, to be completely honest here. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Now I want to make sure that that switch wire isn't getting pinched, alright? You got to see all that nice WD-40 coming out of there? actually is nice when you're having problems like that. I'd rather have too much than not enough. Alright, make sure that wire isn't getting pinched between that case and the other case because that'll ground it out. Probably not with as much electrical tape as we have on there, but you never know. Still. Uh, Alright, so put the strip screw in first. Whoops. See, we haven't eliminated camera problems, guys. We've just change them to different problems. <laughs> now I keep hitting the tripod. I hate slot head screws. I just do. Okay, that's about as snug as we can get that before it's going to slip again. Alright. 
somebody saying, why are you using them? There's a socket hex head on that. It's like a bolt. <laughs> we need to use a screwdriver. I like to start them with the screwdriver. Because I find it to be easier when you're starting them. And then come back with a ratchet and wind them in. That's one. Okay. Well, that mallet works really good as a prop, actually. I'll have to remember that. Because this saw doesn't balance enough to be able to prop it up on a 2x4. That McCulloch's so heavy it doesn't even care. You prop it up on whatever. It'll, it'll counterbalance alright. Wait, where's the... Oh, up here. This is the one I hadn't put in yet. I feel like you guys have a terrible angle of everything, but I can't do much about it unless I take that handlebar off the saw. <laughs> Snug all this up. Is that even going in? Doesn't feel like it is. This big screwdriver here. I guess it is. Three eighths is it? That's slipping. Bingo. Five sixteenths. Yes. All right. I didn't realize that. I had the wrong. Ah, nice. Okay, it's all back together. A rag here. Just to wipe some of that off. Why that's pulling over like that? So choppy. Investigative approach here to the spark plug. See, of course, we're getting any fire. How long is this video going to be? I don't even know. Three quarter, we decide. Feels right. Unless it isn't on there. small tolerance in there for getting that out. This spark plug's all screwed up. I think I might get a new one for it. Yeah, well, I definitely will get a new one for it, actually, whenever I go to the saw shop. This spark plug, you can actually turn the ceramic, but yet it still has spark. I don't, I don't get that, but whatever. Okay, so the plug is, it's wet, very wet. Yeah, gassy, oily. Almost makes me feel like we weren't getting fire, maybe. We were spraying the gas and we weren't getting any fire. 
So maybe what we did is actually going to help, but I don't know. I'm going to go ahead and try to clean this thing up a little bit, though. Get a screwdriver here. I'm just trying to scratch up some of that oil off it. And get it kind of cleaned up a little bit. Side that might work in this for the time being. If we find that we need one. Okay, so I've got that oriented. So you guys should be able to see. Oops, we have spark. Uh oh, that's what I was afraid of. That's off. Let's try it on again. Okay, is it the plug? I have the snowmobile plug here. Same difference. No matter. It'll spark this just as well as a little snowmobile plug. I mean a chainsaw plug. Let's see. Maybe we weren't just getting grounded out enough to off the case, you know, to get spark. You have to have it contact and good on metal. get the spark that you're looking for. Oops, where are you? There you are. Get you that way. No spark. Just freaking lovely. Well, remember how I promised you that I would figure out how to test a capacitor and show you? Uh, I think we're about ready to get into that now. I'm going to have to take that freaking flywheel off again. Jeez. Hmm. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Epically, awesomely nice. But at least we have a direction with us now. And I'm going to say that it is definitely, most definitely, getting gas. Because that plug was soaked. And it ran that one all day. So I kind of suspected it was a fire issue. But I wasn't really sure. Because that's... Something stealing our fire. What is it? Whoops. What is it? I wonder. The plug wire looks good. I don't see any chafes or cuts or anything in it. At least from what I can see here. Alright. Well, I don't know, guys. We're going to have to do some diagnosis and repair we lost spark. And where we up and lost spark, it's probably... Could be the condenser. I don't know. I'm leaning toward that switch, though. That switch might be bad. If we could figure out how to test all this stuff, then we'd be better off. Although I just have my foot in the, in the film here. <laughs> so, anyway. We'll do some testing. We'll test that switch. Test those, uh, that condenser and stuff. If all else fails, if we see nothing there, we'll test the coil. I'll try to figure out how to test this stuff. I'm not real good with the multimeter, I'll be the first to tell you. But it's a skill it's good to have if you can learn it. So we will try to learn it. Like I say, I'm, I don't know. But I tried to spin this switch once, right after I got the saw. So that it would actually be up and down like it's supposed to be. And this was stuck in there so bad. I don't know if I'll be able to get it out if it is bad. 
or how I will, but it could be just that switch. I mean, you never know. You just, you never know. I don't know, guys. I don't know. We'll do some tests. And we'll try to figure out what's going on with it. I mean, who knows, right? But hopefully we can figure something out. Hopefully we can. I don't know, guys. I'm getting pretty fed up with some of these saws. This isn't too bad. If it's a spark issue, chances are we can get it running without too much hassle. Getting like dirt all over my face from the saw. But anyway, so yeah, guys. It's funny, the more I rub it, the more it smears. So, thanks for watching. We'll be back. We'll see what's going on with it. Try to figure it all out. I don't know. I'll do some research. Get my multimeter out. I haven't showed you guys what one of those is if you don't know yet. And now you'll know how to use one when we get done, hopefully. So, thanks for watching, guys. Like, subscribe. Leave a like for, for the day I'm having today. <laughs> and, uh, try to get this thing to run. I don't know. That's like the, the motto right now. Let's try to get this thing to run. <laughs> I have some parts coming for the uh, riding mower. Just ordered them yesterday. Parts for the fuel pump. So we'll try to get the fuel pump fixed on that. And see. I think it might have lost spark too. I can't remember. It's been like a year since I've played around with that riding mower. We'll see what's going on with it. Try to figure it out. I don't know. We'll see. Alright guys, thanks for watching. We'll be back at you with more of the Super XL. And hopefully we can figure something out. Alright guys, see you in the next one.